Greetings, my friends. This is Maryland. Let's move on. Turn number 36. Turn number 36. Here it comes. A dire portent. Oh, interesting. Let's see what somebody did. God of fire is ever burning one. What do we got? He put up the eternal pyre. I believe that's what the name of the spell is. Sorry, I might have missed that by a little bit. Well, that's going to have some effect on the game. We'll take a quick look at research. Ah, doing a little bit more evocation. Looks like I didn't quite get my split here right on the money. I try to do that quite often and get just right on for the next points for the next level. What might have happened is I had it right, and then I decided some commander needed to do a different job. The strategy's still going up. You can see I'm summoning up armies and a fair number of Rena Toads. Got two Rena Toads casters now. Lots of good hunting. 20, 40, another 30, another 20. So almost 100 a turn. A battle in Mir. Alright, looks like, yep, here he comes. He's counterattacking my raiding. Where's Mir? Mir's right here. Oh yeah, that's the one I took where he forgot to put PD. That's okay. Doesn't hurt my plans. Let's see what else happened this turn in the messages. Battle in Roca. So, Abyssia is starting to attack Vanheim. And he's bringing up. Oh, wow, look at that. 59 burning ones. That's a lot. My guess is he should be able to make 3 a turn, maybe 4. They have tremendously high resources. So at four a turn, we're looking at 15, 15 turns worth of recruitment. That's a fair chunk of his entire army. And where is that one? Roca. Now here he comes. So he's coming at Vanheim's other castle. This is going to shut Vanheim down pretty darn hard. And another battle for me. A little bit more raiding. Oh look, I lost a little bit. He must have had some decent PD. I think it's worthwhile to take a look at that battle, see how it developed. So we'll zoom in, always takes a little bit of time. Alright, I'm going to hit the pause and we'll check out the layout. It's got a handful of beast bats, a few slaves, and my jaguars. The slaves, of course, as we've discussed many times, arrow soakers. They're utterly useless troops, but they can soak arrows. And over on his side, that's some pretty hefty PD quite hefty. And one funny thing about Vanheim PD is if you have the right research, these crazy Van Hurses as PD commanders can shut things down. I've seen them wipe out a super combatant by just spamming the Phantom Warriors. And the super combatant can only kill one Phantom Warrior a turn and just keeps chugging across the map and failing. And if it doesn't have fatigue neutral, it eventually fatigues out. And even if it does, sometimes I've seen them simply reach the 75 round limit for turns. Back to my action. Tossing out the blessings. Got the two Micklin priests. The slaves are run. Yeah, they've retreated. They're routing. And I believe the beast bats are sitting on guard commander. You can kind of tell even without seeing the script. Because of the fact that some are turned backwards. Everybody's blessed, so he should start taking some blood vengeance damage and tossed out a few imps and you can see how the imps do really help they soak damage they keep them busy and they stop them from doing much that's very useful so dragging along a handful of slaves can make quite a difference we'll speed this up and get it moving so here comes my jags look at that oh lots of blood vengeance happening and then they chop them up like crazy and still more imps now the one risk here is he is shooting at my priests and the blood slaves that could be a little bit costly there wasn't much I could do with that that slave screen was a bit on the small side I probably should have had it more around the range of 20 it might have lasted a little better alright I think I've seen enough of that one let's just review once again the numbers well I didn't lose any priests but I think one ran away so I'll have to go find them the Royal Forest. Oh, troglodytes. Isn't that fun? I remember this from when I played this one. That sat there a long time before anybody bothered to try to clear out those troglodytes. Sometimes it's just not worth it clearing out those independent attacks. And I believe what we're going to see here 
We'll take a quick look with the Y key at Hoverton. Here comes the assault troops. Now that's a solid army. It is scripted for some basic stuff. You can see, got nice big lines of slaves up front. Got a secondary line of slaves. The Jags are sitting back here. And then the undisciplined Jaguars are going to go roaring up this flank. I am holding and attacking with the Flyers, both the Beast Bats and the Ozzolotls and the Eagle Warriors. So this is a powerful army. We'll collect it all together and then assault his capital. Uh, you can see I'm also making sure I'm well stocked with slaves. We brought a scout up, loaded him up solidly. Slave hunting going on in other places. And nifty nifty, probably forgot to mention this, I looked out and I found the Whispering Woods, got some enchantresses. So as I can afford, and as they are slow to recruit independent, they're a nice unit. Fill gaps, get me the other um, elemental paths I was missing, air particularly and earth. So I can luck out and get a, a double random on those ones, I'll be able to do some remote searching. And right now she's just filling in some gaps, trying to find a little bit of earth gems. We've got a decent number. Back at home, making more brazen vessels, prepping more rain of toads, casters, and so far, I think that covers the basics of turn number 36. So let's move on to turn number 37. Ah, uh, it's a little bit slow sometimes. And doing two and one, sort of what happens, but you love my voice, so you'll be happy. Alright, Thermatogy, I finished up. Still going on there, and again, it looks like I didn't really do the greatest job of balance here. I probably would have made sense to either crank the Thermatogy all the way up or drop it back down to 90. But I don't fuss too much about that stuff. Amble the Disc, claim the throne of the war in the name of Thistle. I believe that's Helheim. Maybe we'll pop out and take a quick check. We'll go to statistics and the thrones. So I've got three. And Helheim's got one, two, three, four. I've got four actually, sorry. Abyssia's hanging on to one. And there's one, two, three thrones still open. They're all single point thrones, so it's not very easy to grab a throne rush. It's pretty blatant. Maybe in the scores graph we'll take a quick look. So Vanheim's getting pounded by me and now by Abyssia. Vanheim's army holding stable. Flick it on and off just to check. Whoops, Kalem looks like a meltdown. But on the other hand, Soromatia also shows a pretty severe meltdown. And who else here? Helheim took a beat in taking something. Not sure what. But the key one to reference, yeah, there we go, income. So Vanheim is crushed economically. Really nothing much else he can do. Back at home, making an armor of twisting thorns. Now this is pretty sweet. For those that may not know it, we'll take a quick look at it. It's got a bit of a disadvantage, but it's a very cheap way to boost blood and nature. 15 blood slaves, 10 nature gems. Really cheap. And you get a boost of each one. Now it's cursed, but it's not a bad piece of armor. Encumbrance is high, but this is for a blood mage who can cast reinvigoration in combat. And besides, in this case, what I'm using it for is a less expensive and more general way to boost my priest kings to cast Raid of Toads. Look around the other places, it's pretty standard, some blood hunting. Ah, it looks like I missed a guy, I didn't give him a job. And you can see, I've grabbed a few jade knives, I forged those earlier. They allow you to sacrifice one more slave when doing blood sacrifice. So a priest of one could sacrifice one slave with a jade knife too. I don't remember if I mentioned it, but I'll just repeat briefly. If you're running sacrifice, you can load up the slaves and they will automatically reload each turn to the amount. You can see here, I didn't have to load these. This guy's doing four, or is it five? Yeah, whatever it's decided to keep on him. So it's a good reason not to do pool blood slaves. Usually pool blood slaves, 
underneath the gem stuff here this pool button works well when you're just hunting and you're not blood sacrificing but it comes down to which is more micro putting slaves back on your sacrificers or manually removing them from your slave carriers and given the shift Z key for unloading slaves which we can just for those that may not remember let's have a look and see if we can find an example here this guy here we just hit shift Z should work or is there oh there's no lab in that parlance so that won't work we'll just quickly do it with, to lock see there you go shift Z poof all the slaves are gone other action more guys moving forward bringing up some water dudes bringing up some more slaves and uh, I decided I guess I'm not gonna hunt here anymore I'm moving these hunters up here to Swand yep so they're gonna move up there and hunt and I'll bring some more hunters up eventually so as far as hunting I've got one two three and I believe I'm hunting here no well, they're moving on but I will hunt oh no the population's too low to hunt mountains of madness let me check again Sefft oh boy that's a hard one to pronounce Seftia Seftia there we go and I am hunting Seftia keeping that hunting up so one two three four five now for quite a long time in this game I hunted my capital well it turns out that's not a very good move sure it doesn't hurt your capital and you can keep the unrest down and still recruit but your income takes a beating and it's one thing to go say at unrest 100 on a province like this one that earns 44 gold do that on a province that earns 400 it's quite painful so in this game I originally was hunting my capital and then I decided that was not the wisest move so I do not do it anymore now migraine Monday here he's just doing research but he is gonna be hanging around and I'm gonna take advantage of scaling summons so if we briefly look there aren't too many say scaling summons in nature or in blood sorry but there's some very nice ones in nature if we move down here and take a look at a couple of them leogryphs not too shabby and they start out with they require a base of two I'm a nine so that's a plus seven so I would be giving 17 leogryphs for 12 gems scaling summons are quite excellent and I think, my friends, I'm going to call that it for turn number 37. Have a good one. Hope to see you in game.